delighted to um, to ask Matthew Marsden to join us. He is here in person. He's come down, I guess, from Los Angeles, where all of you Hollywood movie stars live. He is an English actor and singer, and he's a proud young Hollywood conservative. Not that we're going to attach any labels to anybody, because this is an effort for both the right and the left, for, for liberals and for conservatives, for anybody who loves our troops. But you have starred in the amazing movie that that so many people has, have talked about, Black Hawk Down, Transformers, but mm. the most recent one that I just saw um, a couple weeks ago was Atlas Shrugged. And you just play a really despicable creature in that movie, and I must say, <laughs> well, a good you're actor. not at all like that in real life. <laughs> Matt, thanks for coming. It's my pleasure, thank you for having me. It seems kind of odd, a little bit con uh, counterintuitive for you to uh, be an English actor in the United States and be so vocal in support of our United States military, but that's exactly what you're doing here today. Yeah, well, you know, my first experience coming over to America, I was very lucky after being here for two weeks, I got the movie Black Hawk Down. And I thought, yeah, if it was that easy, I should have come over years ago. That's right. <laughs> um, but it, it really, really moved me, you know, going there and training with the Rangers and with the Navy SEALs and seeing the brotherhood between them. And, and also, just after we filmed that was September 11th and seeing the, the togetherness of the country was all those things mixed together really had a profound effect on me. And uh, it stayed with me for the rest of my life. And, and I love the troops. And anything I can do to help them, I'll do because, I mean, this is, I just want to share with a quick story with you, actually, because I called my aunt the other day, my great aunt, she's 90 years old. And uh, I said, you know, I'm just wondering in the war, what was it like for you when you saw American troops? And she was like, oh, the Americans. They were so handsome, and she just went on and on and on. You and brought on it all and back. On. And she, yeah, I'm like, oh, this is something you need to tell me. But even then, you know, and you think that that was Britain still had an empire then. The respect that the American troops had across the board was utterly immense. And I want to impress on people and impress the people out there in America now. It's still the same. If you want to exemplify the greatness of the United States you don't have to look any further than the military. That's it. They continue to astonish me on a daily basis. Um, the stories that we have actually reported ourselves, um, the ones that I've seen firsthand in Iraq, um, the ones that have come back from Afghanistan, are stories that warm our hearts and make us proud and serve as an inspiration to all of us in all aspects of our life, Roger. It's true, and I think we ought to also say that uh, side by side with American troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, the British troops have stood there for the same reason, mm -hmm. for the same ideals, for the same traditions, for the same liberation and freedom for uh, all people, uh, regardless of their race, creed, or color, where they come from in terms of their religion. It just doesn't matter. What it is is freedom and opportunity, and you really need to, you know, uh, understand that our motivations are pretty different, I think, than the motivations of imperial powers in the past, yes. of, of oppression and colonies and, you know, making money and so forth. We don't seem to be uh, that way, and it seems like every time I meet somebody in the armed forces, and I've met the, the Brits and, and, and the Americans and a lot of the co-things they've done together, because I come from San Diego, there's a lot of these joint things go on militarily. And I'm just impressed as can be by the Brits as well, and the dedication and professionalism and the same spirit, really. Yeah, well, there's definitely a brotherhood, I think, between you know England and America. And uh, I'd like to say one of the experiences I had while shooting um, Transformers, which again was, which I think exemplifies the military. I was speaking to, I was in the bar with a few, of course I was having a water. With a few, <laughs> with a no adult beverage is allowed. <laughs> with, 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 with a few of the boys. And I was talking to them about politics, because you know, it was around the time of the election, just after the election. And uh, I said, well, how do you feel about if so-and-so gets in? They said, it's no different for us. It's commander in chief. That's right. And we, we do what we're told. And that to me, j just the professionalism, and the patriotism of it doesn't matter. I mean, these guys disagreed with one side or the other, but it didn't matter when it came down to it. They were just, we're gonna, we have a job to do, we have to do it. And, uh, and, and that to me is, is incredibly humbling. We are a volunteer army. And um, unfortunately, not all of the family members of our military sign up for this, the tour of duty that their wives or husbands or sons or daughters um, sign up for and it is very difficult on them and that's why we're not only doing these care packages on behalf of those who are serving but for their families 
be, to let them know as well. We do a million, three million dollars worth of media generated around Troopathon every year, and the reason why we do that, the care packages, of course, but we want to spread the word that nobody is going to forget those troops. We know that there are difficult times in this country, and we understand that, that there's a disagreement on whether or not the troops should be drawn down, whether they should be brought home. We understand that uh, everybody has a different opinion on that. And frankly, many of us are weary of the war. There's no, uh, nobody wants war. But when they do go and serve, as you've seen yourself, training with uh, Black, Black Hawk Down for that movie, those guys just, just do it. They just get it done. That's the thing, it's the service, and they're out there uh, in service. And that's what we're really focusing on. Uh, today is not the day for the politics and all that, as we've been trying to ste steer away from that. But I, I just, I just want to be as personal as possible about this. I want people to make a personal commitment and link to these folks who are out there on our behalf in those battle zones to make that commitment and to make that call at 866-866-6372 and give us the dollars that are necessary. And believe me, there's no overhead here. We're talking about, you know, this all goes into these boxes. Yes, it does. And it goes over there. The Postal Service gets them there. And we, uh, I think we're bankrupting the Postal Service just with this, are we not? <laughs> Because they're going bankrupt, these well, guys. You know, I'm getting a little concerned, though, guys, because we haven't had the donations coming in at the rate that we need them to come in to at least get to last year's level, which was $700,000. So um, I'm just going to start, you know, giving away lunches with Matt, <laughs> charge $5,000. Well, taking taking um, some people to lunch. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't know it yet, but you're, people are going to start calling in and saying, I want to go out to lunch with Matthew Mars. And um, we've just got to do what it takes, folks, because we're getting down to the wire here. And I'm getting getting concerned. I'm getting really concerned that, that well, that we don't get the, the amount of money that we can get, that we know is out there for, to show the love and support for our troops. So yeah. the number is 866. It's not real hard to remember. No. Even I can remember it. 866-866-6372 or donate online at troopathon.org. Do you mind if we actually auction you off? I absolutely don't. Oh! God bless you. I'm very cheap, honestly. <laughs> no, 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 we're going to, you know, no, you're expensive on this program. Oh, no, we're not very, <laughs> listen, can please, someone, please, please, please donate money for me not to have to wax Andrew Breitbart. Oh. Yes, really. Please. Please. <laughs> it made me feel a little bit sick in my mouth as I much mean, as I love him. I know. You know, it's like no, he went over the line traumatized there. By no, yeah, I was traumatized it too. sounded good at the time. I, yes, I know. No, we'll do that. We had to put up with all that wiener stuff for a oh, while Oh, no, stop oh. it. We're going to take a break. I'm Roger Hedgecock. It's 866-866-6372. It's, uh, Please donate. We'll be back. Thanks for being with us. Back after this. Stay with us.